So you want to know how to mount down some aluminum cans. Well, in this video, I'm going to be using the Vivor 12kg propane melting furnace. If you'd like to get one for yourself, there is an affiliate link in the description below. Now, before we get started melting down the aluminum cans, I'm going to be removing some of the leftover aluminum from the crucible for my last melt. I've gotten a lot of comments regarding how I do it, so I wanted to include it in this video. Now I'm going to start this off by loading the cruise bowl with some aluminum cans. I also want to mention melting aluminum cans is not the best type of aluminum to be using. However, if you're new to melting metal, this is a great way to start. This is how I started melting metal. It was by using aluminum cans. I should also mention is aluminum cans take a long time to melt. I am melting down a ton of cans today. You can clearly see that from all those cans I've thrown in there, there isn't much molten metal in the bottom of this crucible. And I will continue adding more and more cans. And here's the cans that I'll be melting down in today's video. That's right, every single can in this entire bag will be melted. And you'll notice they're all missing the lids. That's because I used the draft top lift to remove the lids from the cans. It's a soda can top remover. I'll be melting the lids in another video. It's so simple to use. Slightly pop the tab to remove the carbonation, place the can opener over top of the can, squeeze the trigger and rotate the can. When finished, lift up and now you have a can that is topless. Since I've gotten this device, this is how I drink my beverages. And because of that, I have a bunch of soda can top lids. I mean, think about all the soda cans that I'm melting down today. guys catch that last can? I totally missed the crucible. It's now time to remove the dross from the crucible. That's why I was preheating the spoon before I'm placing it into molten metal. Aluminum cans, like I said earlier, are not a good type of metal to be remelting. It is filled with impurities and it takes so long to get such a small yield of usable aluminum. The good thing about having a puddle of aluminum in the bottom is because I can now throw the cans in and press them down into that molten aluminum, which will help them melt much quicker than before. I 
I should have said in the very beginning of this video is melting metal is very dangerous. So make sure you're wearing your proper protective equipment. Can you imagine how long it would take to melt down all these cans if I melted them one by one and not crushing them? This is going to be the last scoop of the dross before I pour the molten aluminum into a mold. This mold was created using a foundry sand called green sand. I made a sand mold of a graphite ingot mold. I wanted it to be larger than what the mold would have given me so I made a mold of the mold. This is a graphite ingot mold. Not the one I made the mold of though. You can see this is much larger. I only have one of these. I made sure I preheated it before pouring any molten metal into it to make sure any of the moisture was removed from the mold. Moisture is very dangerous when it comes to molten metal. I let that set between 5 to 10 minutes before removing it from the mold. Now I'm going to dip it in some water to cool it off even further. I do have some molten aluminum left over in the bottom of the crucible, which is going to help me in melting down more of these cans, instead of basically starting all over again. Make sure you have that puddle of aluminum in the bottom. It's now time again to remove more of that dross in this puddle of molten aluminum.
you didn't think I forgot about this little ingot, did you? Yeah, the one I made in the very beginning of the video. Well, it's cooled down now, and I can actually handle it with my hands now. All right, guys, here is the ingots from today's metal casting from aluminum cans. I think they came out pretty cool. More aluminum ingots for my stash. And you may be wondering what I have here in the background. Well, these are actually aluminum castings that I made this past month. So if you are interested in seeing how I made them, definitely check back in my other videos and find out. We can't finish off an aluminum can melting video without seeing how much good aluminum I recovered from those aluminum cans. According to the scale, I have 5.02 pounds of good aluminum. And of course we need to weigh the dross. Look at all this stuff. This is garbage. I'm just going to throw it out. Oh wait, I actually have more. From the second time I scooped out the dross. And you're about to see something that I usually don't show on my videos. You know, mistakes. So we have 2.7 pounds of dross, which comes out to 35% of those aluminum cans is garbage. But I have more aluminum ingots to add to my stack. And if you guys like this stack of aluminum ingots, make sure to leave a comment below like the video and if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe because i make cool stuff like this all the time not just ingots but if you saw it before i make cool stuff like the minecraft sword 